Hello traders, welcome to another trading interview, this time with one of our serious FTMO traders, Mohamed from the United States in Atlanta. Welcome Mohamed. Thank you for having me, Peter. Yeah, we thank you too. And guys, for those who are listening for the first time, we are a proprietary trading company that actively search for trading talents. And therefore, we have developed a unique two-step elevation process that consists of FTMO challenge and verification pass. And once you pass this process, you will be offered a unique placement in our proprietary trading company where you can remotely manage your own FTMO account. And that is why we have Mohammed here, because Mohammed has right now one mastery account with $200,000. And last month, he made $20,000. 21 and that's great result so before we are going to talk about how how he could manage and how he could possibly make this profit we'll be talking about him so Mohammed, can you tell us something about you and you know as your introduction absolutely man uh as peter said in the introduction my name is Mohammed kande um, i'm based out of atlanta georgia um, i'm originally from a very small country guinea west africa um okay. born and raised here I, um, I moved to the United States um, in 2000, uh, December 2003, to go to school and have a better life. You know, my older oh. brother was, and I moved here to be with him to to kind of you know go to school and you know live live that American dream that everybody talked about. You wow. know, <laughs> and how did you get there? And with whom? With your family? Yes, with my family, my brother, my my mother and my brother were here, and then I moved here with them. Wow! 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 Yeah. So 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 very very small humble beginnings. You know, I came here to. Just Go, go to school, uh -huh. you know, played sports, you know, in uh, middle school and high school, uh, went to college for a couple of years and decided that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got into the um, automotive industry. I used to be a car salesperson. Okay. I started selling cars, you know, uh, 2012, right out of college, I started selling cars uh -huh. and, uh, uh, you know, moved up in the, in the car industry pretty good. Uh, I ended up becoming a finance manager in the automotive industry. And um and I got introduced to trading in um in 2016, and um when I was selling cars, you know, two of my friends, you know, I'll I'll never forget it, man. <laughs> you know, May uh, April of 2016, I got introduced to uh, to trading, okay. and I think uh, May of 2016, I opened up my first Talentx account. <laughs> I don't know if traders out there who know, but how, uh, how big account? <laughs> My first account was like five hundred dollars. <laughs> and how fast was the blowing away? <laughs> uh, actually, it took a while, man. I turned five hundred dollars <laughs> into like seventy six hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. And then one night, AUD. I was trading AUD USD. AU. One night, AUD had a meeting, and the market just dropped. <laughs> man, what it's happened? like my, what happened? My, my eyes. Um, I don't, man, my, my, my $7,600 account, I was at, at one point in that trade, I was almost up 10 grand because of the meeting mm -hmm. and then the market dropped, man. And I think like I closed, like I couldn't move like that. That's, that's, that's the first time I dealt with psychology in the market. <laughs> I froze. And you didn't have the stop loss there. No, I, I, I had, I, I had my stop loss, <laughs> but I never moved my stop loss up to break even. I never moved my stop loss up in profit. Oh <laughs> okay. So, so I'm up, you know, I'm yeah. up almost $10,000 and then the market drops. And I think I ended up like closing everything at like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. And then I was sick. For like, I was sick for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> and how many times this happened to you? Man, I have blown over pr probably closer to 30 accounts. No in my way. Trade. No way. Absolutely. <laughs> so that, that's how many? How, how much money? Uh, man. Okay. So I was in a very different position than most people, Peter. Right? Because you know, I, I I I had a job where I made really really good money. So I was able to invest a lot of money in trading. Um, when it was all said and done, man, six figures I lost in the markets before I became profitable. Six figures, man. Wow. And, and I have the receipts to prove it. <laughs> I've lost, I've lost a lot. Maybe you can show. Maybe you can show me then. Them after. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> over, over at least over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I've lost trading <laughs> before I got to the point where you know I started actually making money. Absolutely, it was a long road for sure. <laughs> and so you know, you were in the car dealership. And yes. And before that. 
What did you study, Me? for example? Um, well, I was a I was a pre medicine and biology major. Okay. So I was you, a pre medicine. And you didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do that. Um, you, you know, I, I come from an African background, and when you come to America, you either need to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. You know what I mean? That's the <laughs> only thing that's good enough. You know, anything yeah. else is not. So you know, it, you know. So I decided that I wanted to become um, an anesthesiologist. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that working towards. And, you know, after a couple of years of college, I got my associate's degree. I realized, you know what? I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? I don't want to do this. Uh, and and I started working at a company called Racetrack. It's a gas station. Okay. So, um, and it was at that gas station that I met a gentleman who was selling cars. He uh, he came to pump gas in his six series BMW. Wow. And I, and I asked him what he did. And he told me that he sold cars for a living. I said, well, that's what I want to do, too, because I want a six series BMW, too. <laughs> and, and how many of I, those you have uh, you have sold? <laughs> you know what? How many of those you have sold? I, I've, I've sold quite a few BMWs, but I worked at a Honda dealership. I worked okay. at a, I sold cars at Honda. I worked for uh, for a company called Sons Honda in McDonough, Georgia, for those people in Atlanta. So that's where I sold. Uh, I sold Hondas there. Um, Right out of the like, right in as the recession started to settle down, I started selling cars in 2012. <laughs> One of the worst times to sell cars, man. It was and, really tough. And what was the breaking point when you decide, you know, trading is better than you know dealership? Um, so in uh, so in 2016, um, December uh, of 2016, because uh -huh. I just started trading in May. December of 2016, my daughter is born, and I tried to take a two weeks vacation. And my job told me I could that I couldn't take a two week vacation. I could only take a few days. And it was at that time that I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna trade full time. I don't wanna I don't wanna do this anymore. So of course I quit my job December of 2016 for trade, but I, I only lasted two months. And in February of 2017, I went back into the car business at another dealership to do finance. And and how many accounts have you blown in those two month period? Um, I didn't blow any accounts during that time. Okay. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't blow any accounts during that time because I was super focused on, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna get out of the business. You know, I'm, I'm going to trade full time. So those two months, I didn't blow any accounts. So you were but, profitable? Uh, no, I wasn't profitable, but I wasn't blowing any accounts. Uh, okay, okay. So I wasn't, I wasn't blowing my accounts, but I wasn't like, I was making money and then losing the money. So it's like, I'll make a little bit of money and then I'll give it back to the markets. Yep. I'll make a little bit of money and I give it back to the markets, you know? Mm -hmm. So that happened. And then two months later, you know, I realized, okay, that wasn't sustainable. That didn't make sense. So December, I went back into the into the car business. Mm -hmm. And then I stayed there until, uh, so from February 2017 till December 2018. Mm -hmm. December 2018 is when I finally quit for good to trade full time. So you'll be probably learning the trading stuff in practicing you you have yes. you know learned much you know about some theory or or something or how do you learn um self man it was it was self-taught you know like 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 most people you know i bought a couple of courses and um those courses unfortunately didn't like they they they, they, they didn't do for me what i needed I, I i think that a lot of traders focus so much on technical analysis mm -hmm. that they miss the boat on what's really important in trading. And in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, the most important aspect of trading mm -hmm. isn't fundamental or technicals, but it is mental analysis. Yeah, the technology. Mental analysis, yeah, psychology is, is gravely important. And unfortunately, the reason why so many traders are not successful is because they spend 99% of their times trying to figure out the best strategy, the best technical analysis, and they never work on themselves. They never work on their mental. Yes. And that is unfortunately, they, you, you're not going to be as successful if you don't work on, on self. Yep. And with that goes the risk management, right? 1,000%. Yeah. 1,000%. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, you, like you have to know your, uh, you, you have to know how risk averse you are. Like me, for example, I'm very aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I you know, and, and, and because of that, I'm very risk averse. And many people aren't like that, you know, uh, you know, n switching numbers, like going from trading my personal account, which was less than $10,000 mm -hmm. to trading the FTMO account for the $100,000 challenge. Like I had to do some readjusting, you know, I had to go back and recalibrate myself because I wasn't used to seeing those big numbers. You know, when I was in drawdown a thousand dollars, I was scared mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, you know, a thousand dollar drawdown on a 
$10,000 account is very different than a $1,000 drawdown on a $100,000 account. So those are the small little adjustments that you have to make as a trader. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and those are the things that you have to really be self-aware about. You know, self-awareness is extremely important, yep. you know, as a trader. Yep. Yep. Okay, so let's now break down your strategy because I would like to know how do you, how do you work with those charts and, yeah. and what strategy do you use? So you, you already told me that you use mostly you use your your head right your brain it's yeah. not about the fundamental yeah. or statistical or technical stuff it's more about yeah. yourself so can you more define that absolutely so 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 when it comes from a trading standpoint i, I don't i don't come from the fundamental aspect of it i come from the technical aspect of it right okay. so I, i utilize technical analysis now to say that i have a particular strategy that i use i do not i don't have one particular strategy that i use because okay. there are different market conditions right Um, the, the, the strategy that you use in a trending market is probably not going to work in a consolidating market. And the strategy that you use in a consolidating market is most likely not going to work in a trending market. Yeah, so, but if you are, for example, focusing only on one instrument, you yes. can, you know, easily follow what's happened to it, you know, because you're Absolutely. only focusing on two economies or just yeah. or just if you are following some index, you are just following one yeah. economy. Like me personally, I cannot go to the charts and say, Okay, Peter, this is what I do every single time to, to win the trade uh -huh. because I don't, I don't work. Yeah, because I, I don't work like that. So, for, for instance, I trade the pound Australian dollar. That's my favorite pair. Mm -hmm. That's the only, for the most part, that's the only pair that I trade, right? 80% of my trades are going to come from that. And the other 20% are going to come from gold and maybe the pound yen, okay. right? So, um, so like on, on, on the pound Australian dollar, you know, when I'm trading the markets, it just depends, man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I may catch an engulfing. As support of resistance uh -huh. you know what i mean w which is my bread and butter right like like you know like structural areas you know what i mean um engulfings you know but i don't necessarily call that a strategy right because that you're getting into the market and you, and you're and you're finding an opportunity in the market but that's not necessarily a strategy mm -hmm. so I don't, i i don't i don't come from that standpoint i don't come from the standpoint that i have this particular strategy that i do all the time i i i don't like to think like that because the market is forever changing and oftentimes When the market changes and people don't adapt to the market, they get messed up. So because of that, I, I, li I like to think of it as I'm forever flowing with the market. Mm -hmm. I want to always flow with the market. I always want to be cognizant of whether or not the market is changing. Mm -hmm. And if that if the market is changing, I want to adapt with the market. So because of that, you know, that that's what I focus on. That's what I focus on. So that, that's where my strategy comes from. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So can, can you show me, show me that in, in Metro Trade 4? Absolutely. Um, well, I use trading view, so I can I can show cool, you that cool, on cool. that. Show me in the trading view. Gotcha. All right. So as you guys can see, um, this is the pound Australian dollar. I'm, I'm on a daily chart right here and I'm, I'm kind of going to zoom out just to kind of give you an idea. As you can see, I just have the the area where I'm currently working is the area that I have marked up. Uh -huh. And I, I usually don't like to um, I usually don't like to cloud my charts, man. I like to make it very, very simple. Um, I'm currently in a, I'm currently in a long position on the um on the pound of Charlie and dollar and if you guys take a look right here i use the three month chart the monthly the weekly the daily the four hour three hour two hour one hour 30 minute 15 minute <laughs> um the five minute and the one minute are there but i'm not a big fan of the five minute and one minute chart so i don't generally get on those charts okay you know uh, the, the lowest time frame that i'll place a trade is the 15 minute mm -hmm. which is actually where i took a trade on, on on this pair right now i'm actually in the trade right now I had this initial push right here and a pullback. And then you had this push to the upside after the price broke this little area right here. And then this pullback. And then I took it on an engulfing right here. I got in at 7805. Right after this engulfing right here, I got in at 7805 for uh for the long. And I'm still in the trade as of now. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm 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 so you I'm are days in the trade, right? Uh yes, I've been in this trade since Uh, yesterday, yeah. Okay. Since yesterday, early yesterday, I took the straight. So I'm sorry. Uh, what are we today? Well, we're Wednesday today, so Monday. Uh, I've okay. been in the straight Monday. So I'm a swing trader, right? I swing trades. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a trader. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a scalper or anything like that. I'm a swing trader. Usually, when I'm in the markets, I'll usually hold a trade a day or two or three. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, personally, I like to trade. Uh, you know, like if like if. Like if I'm trend trading, I like to trade. I like to hold my trades over the weekend. But unfortunately, you know, with uh, with the FTMO accounts, they they don't 
you know, they, they like it to close the trades mm -hmm. on Friday because of gaps and stuff like that. So usually close and out you, of the trade. And, and you know Friday. why, right? Oh, because of gaps. You know, there's gaps and there's, you, you and don't know like, what's going to happen when the market right. opens up. The market can gap down and gap up 100 pips. You so know, you also are not trading in during the, the weekend, right? No, I don't, I don't. I don't trade during the weekend. No, that's like 100 break. Yep. You know, you you, you got you got to get away from the charts. You got to get away from the market. That's why right? you have set the rules. Like you know, it's it's really high risky stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So no, I'm, I'm I always give myself that mental break. You know what I mean? I I used to try to like trade like cryptos and stuff like that during the weekend. Oh my god! And I really cryptos like, during weekends. <laughs> it's yeah, it's impossible but, yeah. what's happening yeah. sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, and I realized that like, it's just it was an optimum at all. You know what I mean? Like if you want to be your absolute best self, you cannot. You you know you have to give yourself the, that break. That that from so from Friday 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for me mm -hmm. till you know Sunday at 5 p.m. You know Sunday morning I usually wake up very early in the morning go work out, meditate, and then I'll get on the charts and then I'll do my technical analysis and my breakdown for the week. And then after that, you know, I wait for the market to open up. And usually I never place trades on Sundays anymore. You know, I stopped doing that because Sundays is just, it's not worth it to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Sundays I don't play trades. I usually wait until Monday. Nice. To, uh, to I'm really oh. interested about the meditation stuff. That's really important sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, one thing that I realized for me is that I have to be a creature of routine and those routines have to be set in. So for me, um, Monday through Friday, I wake up at 2.45 a.m. 2.45 in the morning, I wake up Eastern Standard Time. By 3 a.m., I go to the gym. I go to a 24-hour gym, 24-hour uh, snap fitness. I work out from 3 till 4. I come back home, take a shower, um, meditate for 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Um, and then after that, I get in front of the charts because I trade the London session. So I trade from the London session until the U.S. session and I have set working hours. Right. So I trade from 5 a.m. London uh, Eastern Standard Time till uh, 12 p.m. After that, I'm done trading After 12 p.m. I don't place any trades, no matter what. Rain, hell, sleep. No. And before the execution, you go to you, you go meditate. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Every single day. Wow. Every, if, if I do not meditate, I'm going to take a loss. <laughs> like it's got to that point. Like mentally, like that's how I am now. Like every day when I wake up, you know, before I get on the charts, I have to do my mindfulness meditation. 15 minutes mindfulness mindfulness meditation every single day, Monday through Friday. If I don't do it, it's it, like I just I'm I'm not there. You know what I mean? And I and I like to be all the way there mentally, and that's what and that's what I've realized helped me out. I like my blood pumping and flowing, so I go and I work out. I lift super heavy weights when I go work out because my blood is pumping. And then I come and I meditate, and then I'm mindful. And man, when I get on the charts, I'm gonna slaughter I believe, great bit of I believe. Absolutely. Great absolutely. inspiration for everybody, I believe. For really sure, great. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, to any trader out there, man, the traders who are trading now, you're wanting to do the FTMO, meditate. Learn how to meditate, man. Learn how to meditate. It is going to save you as a trader because our minds are not designed for for a probabilistic environment. You know, trading is extremely probabilistic. And as yeah. humans, we're designed to either win or lose. And you and, and you have to get out of their mindset and get into the probabilistic mindset. Yeah. And meditating has helped me do that tremendously. And get the emotions out of it, right? And get the emotions out of it. And, and, and you can never get the emotions completely out of there, but you just have to learn to get your emotions in check. Yep. And there's breathing techniques out there that you can do to help you get your emotions in check, help you understand when you're getting antsy, you know what I mean? When you're feeling a little uncomfortable, you know, let, let's say sometimes you go up on a lot size and, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling a little worried, you know, like all those things can be, you can, you can understand how you're feeling. You yeah. can be self-aware of those things and then, and navigate through them as you're trading. And it's very helpful. Wow. Okay. Let's go back to the, to your chart and show yeah. me, for example, what indicators do you use or what is your I, chart? I, I I don't, I don't usually use indicators, man. Like, as you can see right here, I have the volume. Okay. You know what I mean? Just the okay. volume. Um, so the volume, I, 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 that's I, I, important. I have an idea where, um, where volume is on a higher time frame. Like, if, um, like if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm in a trade long and, and I have a bearish engulfing that comes in and then it comes in with a lot of volume, you know, usually that's time for me to kind of pay attention to see what's going on and see if there's an area of structure that needs to be break, broken. Like this is a perfect example right here on a four hour chart. If you guys take a look, this candle right here, 
came in with a lot of volume. You know what I mean? Just as much volume as the previous candles, right? And then as you can see, like right here, price is getting rejected from, from this 79.20 area, which is a psychological area for me, right? So price is getting rejected from this area. So I pay attention to stuff like that. So what, so when I see something like that, then I'll go down to the lower time frame and you know I'll mark an area structure right here. So, okay, you know what? I have this area right here. So if price closes, it, more than likely if price closes below this area, first of all, 7,900. If price closes below 7,900, which is a psychological level, I'm, I'm thinking about, okay, you know what? This is probably an area that once price breaks below this area, I need to be considering closing my trade and, and, and taking my profits, yeah, right? there will be right some now, reaction probably. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, th so those are small things that I watch out for. And I try to keep it very, very small like that, right? Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at it right here on, on a higher time frame, you'll see, okay, price has pushed down to the 7,900 area and it got rejected one time, it pushed again and then it got rejected. So I'm going to see how this candle reacts right here, how this, um, how this candle reacts. And the close of this candle is gonna coincide with the close of a two hour candle, which the two, hour, the two hour chart is instrumental in my trading and um, and it, and the th the two and three hour chart are, are instrumental in my trading process. So the way that these two the way that these two time frames are going to close at eleven a.m. right here, Eastern Standard Time, is going to give me an idea of you know what maybe I need to get out of this trade or maybe I need to hold on to this trade. There's more to come, but there's rejection, right? There was a there was a nice little wick last night into a meeting. You know what I mean? Price pushed down. down. So I don't know if this is a pullback or if this is just um, a continuation of this downtrend right here. So I'm, I'm biased long on the trade, so I have to get that in check as well. You know, because oftentimes traders are either biased long or biased short. So you have to know what your bias is and then, you know, know how to emotionally manage that trade once you're in the trade. So that, that's how it goes, man. That, that's how simple it is for me, man. So nothing simple, more, simple. Nothing less. And okay. Nothing more, nothing less, man. Price action, support and resistance. You know what I mean? And are when you price... looking for some, you know, gravestone doji or I don't know, some price action stuff? Uh, engulfings like this like this is my favorite candle to trade engulfings and pin bars are my favorite candles to trade so engulfing okay. of a structure area is really nice uh pin bar off of a you see structure right here i actually took this trade right here pin bar on the daily chart right here off of the mm -hmm. off of my structure area you know this was a really really good trade right so so usually that that's what i look for but i try to keep it very very simple man like price price action price. support and resistance and then you are looking for some trends right some trends yep price pushed down right here price pushed up and then price created a higher low, higher low. this is a for me to take the price long simple as that very very simple i try to keep it extremely simple like that when i do that 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 is when i am at my best as a trader when i keep it extremely simple like that and how many trades do you open um every day i probably place two trades max so one that's to two trades rule or like if if you that's open, my rule that's your rule that's cool. my rule because, nice. because when I, because when I got into trading I used to over trade a lot I used to be that person that would place 30 trades in one week I know that you stuff. know what absolutely is the worst nightmare man come on it is absolute worst and you know it's I had like, to realize you know you want to save the day but you, you know make worse everything <laughs> 100 percent, man so you over here trying to save the day and you end up getting yourself in more drawdown so you know, I'm and, and me, I'm so aggressive that I have to have these rules. Yep. So I have to, you know, ma max, you know, because I only trade one pair now, you know, you know, I used to be that guy that traded 15 pairs, 16 pairs. You know what I mean? And on Sundays, well, I like don't know what I, you mean. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like when I would do my analysis for Never the week, <laughs> I would spend hours all day doing analysis because I'm breaking down so many different markets. Mm. And I realized, you know what? You cannot be successful like that. You know, you have to find it, it you, you know trading is so synonymous to life right mm -hmm. in life when you have one partner that you focus on life is a lot easier in trading is the same thing when you have one pair that you focus on and you and, and you love that pair and you dote on that pair that pair usually brings you back profits uh, yeah, so so that's that that's how I, that, that's how i look at it great great uh the pound australian dollar she she's my wife she's my baby i take good care of her she takes good care of me and i only want to be with her <laughs> Okay. That's how I look and, at. and your strategy get you twenty one thousand dollars. So uh, I absolutely. want to see the results. So can you show me the metrics yeah. app from Trader? Oh yeah, absolutely. So this is this is the metrics tab for for for, for the twenty one k account. Um, so 
I actually want to go down to the statistics uh -huh. real quick because uh -huh. I really want to show traders something. Um, a lot of traders think that you need to be a 80%, 90%, 100% winning trader in order to be successful. Me personally, I'm a 35 to 40% winning trader. I'm not a 60 to 30% winning trader. I'm a 30 to 40% winning trader, and, and, I, and I gladly admit that. But if you look at it right here, it's much if you worse. look at it, <laughs> it, it, it's actually worse than that, right? 23.68% yep. win, win, win rate. But if you, but if you this, look at my is this is the stuff, you know, important. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like when I strike, it's hot, right? Like, like there's a lot of idle trading, you know what I mean? But when I finally get the position, because I'm a swing trader, right? So when I finally get that perfect position, I'm going to swing it to the moon and I'm, and I'm going to maximize my profits, right? And of course, that doesn't happen every time. But ge generally speaking, when I'm trading, I'm usually between 37 to 40% win, win rate. But my R and R is always, you know what I mean. My risk to reward, my, my 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 rate of rate return ratio is always above a three. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. always above a three. You know what I mean? Because I'm 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 gonna get those, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna get those three to ones. I'm gonna get those four to ones. I'm gonna get those five to ones. And 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 if you look at my curve, yeah. it's a pretty decent curve. It's not you, you're I'm I'm not getting a lot of drawdown. You're not getting a lot of, you know what I mean? This is the biggest drawdown that I had right here. You know, I had got up all the way to 30 grand and then I pushed all the way down what to did, 17. What, what did happen there? You know, you have like 31 uh, grand. So, so, so what happened? Yeah. So what happened was excited, emotional. Mm, you know, I got really excited. Right. I, felt, I felt invincible. I felt <laughs> like I could do it wrong. And then I got into the markets and then the market is always going to, the market is always going to humble you. The market is always going to bring you back to reality, you know, because this right here is me focusing on my trading, me taking my high probability trades. This right here is me thinking that I can do no wrong. I'm going to win every trade. Uh, getting away from that probabilistic mindset and 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 leaning towards I can I'm going to win or I'm going to lose, right? And then this this curve back to the upside is me getting back into that probabilistic mindset mm -hmm. and realizing that okay, this is not about winning or losing. This is a game of probability. You know, some you win some, you lose some. As long as you take high probability trades, you're going to end up on the positive side of things every single time. Have you been meditating enough when you've been doing, you know, when you've been going down? Um, yeah, like, 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 even like when I'm in drawdown, I still meditate every day. You know what I mean? When I'm in drawdown, because th this is one thing. So, I've so, so wh wh why that? Why does that happen? Uh, be it because just more the, about the emotion. But I thought that you said that you are you 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 try not to using that, and you know. Absolutely. Well, be, be, because tra 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 trading is not a is, is not a sum total game, right? Uh -huh. Because it like, like like just because you meditate every day does not mean that your emotions are going to be on check one hundred percent of the time. We're still human, right? Yes. We're still going to make That's mistakes. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Absolutely, we're we're still human. We're still going to make mistakes. Just because you're meditating every day, just because you have a routine, doesn't mean that you're just going to win every single time. You're still going to have periods of drawdown uh, as a trader. You know, what separates the, the good traders from the best traders to the traders that don't make it at all is the fact that you understand that trading is uh, drawdown is a part of the game and you have to survive through drawdown because those periods of drawdown come. And then when they come, you, you have you have to take it gracefully and you have to handle it with care. So that way, when that period of um, when those profiting periods come again, you, you, you're back over there again. You know what that, I mean? So that, that's what I wanted different. to hear. And that's probably Absolutely. what two followers want to hear, because, you know, Absolutely. it is ups and downs always. You know, you can't oh. go to the moon for oh. all the year. You cannot. Absolutely. So even if you have set rules and you know, if you yep. meditate and even if you are the best one, you cannot yep. go always to the moon. It's ups and downs. But in the long term, the strategy should be working. And that's what we are showing exactly. me today. Absolutely. Like 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 whatever edge you have, what, whatever what whatever it is that you use to get inside of the market to help you be profitable uh, one thing that i realized is you have to keep focusing on that when i was blowing accounts i was blaming the markets i was blaming the strategy i was blaming the time i was blaming everything and everyone else but myself mm. and then once i realized it, and that's why i love trading so much peter trading is one of the best freaking things that you can do in the world because there's nobody else that you can blame and it's instant like it is it gives you instant feedback if you're a greedy person in the market, you're going to be greedy and you're going to lose. Yep. You know what I mean? If, if you're a person like whatever type of individual you are, you, you, whatever it is, it is going to it is it is going to get like the market is going to show you who you are. And then it is your job to, to do that, that self-analysis and say, OK, you know what? I need to change. 
But I love this market because there's nobody else to blame. If whether I have a good day or a bad day, Peter, there's only one person to blame, and it's Muhammad. And I love that. I can't blame anybody. I don't have a manager that I can blame. I can't say this person yep. is holding me back from being from making the most money. There's no other body to blame but me. And that's that's what I like. I like to be in complete control of my destiny. And, and in trading, I'm not necessarily in control of my winning profits, but I'm in control of my behavior 100 percent. I cannot blame anybody else for my behaviors. And I love that about the markets. Nice. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. Really important stuff. So yeah. can you now tell me something about the trading objectives and how do you use them? Is that, um, is that some guidance for you or have you had before some some, yeah. some kind of this trading objectives so, before you joined FTMO? Yeah. Or? I actually I actually really, really like the, um, the, the, the max daily loss. I really, really like the max daily loss. The reason why I really, really like the max daily loss is because whatever the max daily loss is, I usually try to stay about a couple of grand under that. Like, you know, about I, I usually try to do about 50, 60 percent of that. And then like in, in, in a trading day, if I hit 60 percent of my max daily loss, I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, it, you know what I mean? It's just like me personally, like I, I, I know how I used to be. I know how I used to over trade. I know how I used to just, you know, you know, over leverage myself. So because of that, I really love the max daily loss because it's it's really, really tough to over leverage yourself. And I really like that about it. And 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 I and, and I I I vehemently use it because i always keep in mind okay you know what my max day like now my max daily loss is not um is uh my max daily loss is in five grand now it's 10 grand so i keep that in mind so if i take a five thousand dollar loss in a day if i take a six grand loss in a day i'm done for the day yep. Yep. i'm done for the day and then i'll take it on to the not, and i'll take it on to the next day you know what i mean yep. Yep. And, and and like i don't beat myself up i don't get mad like and and oftentimes what a lot of traders do is like when they take a bit like when they take a five six thousand dollar loss like they are just beating themselves down and and that's, and, and that's not going to help you be profitable the next yep. day or the next week you know you have to understand that you, you have to take your losses gracefully just like you take your wins you know what i mean there, there can't be no emotion like i'm not going to get very excited if i have a 10 grand day and i'm not going to get very yep. uh, mad if i have a five grand loss day you know what i mean it's it's mm -hmm. it's a part of the game it's a part of the process mm -hmm. you take your punches and you roll with them nice uh, before I will ask you about your worst and best trade, I will just say to our followers that right now you are showing me your account with deposit $100,000, but we've yes. been saying in the beginning that you have uh, a mastery account with $200,000 too. Yes. So, you know, now you have $200,000. Yes. yes. So, so like, just uh, to make uh, check and clear. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So I, I did another challenge and then I got the $200,000 account and actually um, the beginning of May, I'm gonna do one last challenge for an additional two hundred thousand to get the four hundred. Wow. Okay, yeah, so show I, me your best trade, you know, so that we can see my, my, my best trade. Let's take a look. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yep. So, so this one. No, no, you can stop there. Okay, let's let's now see the biggest one. So ten thousand dollars. No, no. Let's, let, 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 let's see. Let's see my. I actually want to see my. <laughs> so let's see the biggest loss first. You know what I mean? Get that out the way. And I think that my my biggest loss is this was one. Is this one? Two thousand six hundred and twenty dollars. That was that was that was my biggest loss at one time. As I'm seeing it right, you know, you are opening sometimes ten lots or five lots yeah. or sometimes only one lot. So how do you calculate that? So I, it, it it it's it's based on risk, right? It, it based on how many pips I'm risking, right? Because like the percentage, right? So if 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 I'm risking thirty pips versus risking you know, 30, 37 pips is going to be a different lot size, yep, right? Yep, yep. Because I'm always risking a particular percentage, right? I always want to risk more. If you are risking only five pips, you can open 10 yeah. lots, right? Exactly. Like if I'm risking five pips, I can open up a 10 lot. Uh, that that doesn't happen very often, but it does happen <laughs> from time to time, especially with the pound Australian dollar. It's not, the pound Australian dollar is just one of those pairs where you, you, you're you not going to get away risking five, 10 pips, you know, at, at least not as a swing trader, right? Not, not for me. You know, I'm sure there's some scalpers out there that can more power to them. Me personally, that doesn't work for me. But like every once in a while, you know, I'll see like a 10 lot, which is really not a 10 lot, right? A 10 lot on a pound Australian dollar. I think a hundred dollars a pip is like seventy eight, seventy eight dollars a pip when, when when you do the um, the calculations. So absolutely. So um and and um so yeah. So that's how it goes. It's just based on the uh, based based on uh, how many pips I'm risking, the percentages, and and that that's how I usually come up with uh, with my with my risk. Okay, so that was how, how about the best one? 
Um, the best one, let's take a look. Uh, Maybe boom. if you remember it, you can tell me something about how did you... Uh, yeah, my, my best trade, I, actually, I can remember it without looking at it. I know I've already pulled up. <laughs> but my best trade was actually a long position on Great British Fine AUD. I uh, remember when I was telling you that I had caught a nice long. Remember I was telling you, uh, you know, that I had uh -huh. caught like a nice... Um, remember I told you I caught this pin bar right here and pushed it all the way up? So that was actually that was my, my best trade. Yeah. So that was this trade right here. I got in at 77.19 and then I, I took it all the way up to like 1.81 and some change. So that was actually my, 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 my best trade. You know, that it was, a, I was probably in this trade like maybe three, four days. And, um, and it was a, actually nah, probably two, two, two days. And I, mm -hmm. and I, and I made, um, and I made 10 grand on that trade. So that was my, that was, and, that and was did my you hit the take profit or you closed it by yourself? Um, actually, I do not remember. It doesn't um, matter. I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, uh, usually like I manage my trade, like I, like I have my long-term TP set mm -hmm. always, however, I always manage it. Like, like for instance, like I, I got out like at 1.81 and some change. So I probably got out as soon as I started getting like, probably got out around this area right here, right? So Before, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, some yeah. dynamic risk management, right? Exactly, like 1.81, probably got out like when price got to my resistance area, like around this area right here. I probably jumped out before price pushed all the way down again hmm. before I took it probably yeah so yeah so so that's that 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 that's how it goes but that that was that was my best trade that was my best trade. Okay, show me uh, your other statistics below where we can see your yeah. well, win I, rates. I, 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 go ahead. We can, where we can see your win rates on uh, on your overall overall trading. If you go uh, below, yes, yes, this one. Exactly. Gotcha. So you are mostly profitable at 1 p.m. and then to uh, 2 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's why 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 is that? Uh, be because um, I I have a I, I have a particular strategy on gold that I use overnight. Uh -huh. So because of that, like 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 there's some uh, particular strategy. Like there's a setup on gold that I that I take. From time to time at night. That's why you. That's why you're seeing that right there. But do you because sleep I, enough, <laughs> or you are, or, or you are, you know, waking up in the night? Oh my God, it's the gold, you know. It's oh, the no, 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 no. I, I don't do that. So like, like if like if my setup is there before I go to bed, then I'll take it. And then if it's not, because I wake up at two in the morning, sometimes if I see the setup at two in the morning, then I'll take it before I go to the gym. But if not, then I'll just go work out and I'll come back. Okay. Yeah. And what about the symbol statistics below? So the symbol statistics. And that's you the pound, the Australian dollar, right? That's like the pound. Said. Yeah. Pound. As you can see, when I when I trade other pairs, I don't I don't have a lot of success with other pairs. The pound is just that. That's my baby, man. That's the pair that I know that I'm gonna do well with. That's the pair that I know that I can consistently win with. So that's the pair I focus on. And and I, I can see the crypto there. You you've been trying to buy the or sell the the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about the cryptocurrency that you are not a fan of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like like I don't I don't I don't trade it at like I don't trade much like because I like to take swing positions and because the market is so like um erratic with the cryptos, I try to wait for just a very nice structural area. Okay. So like if you take a look right here, you know, with the with B BTC USD, like I, I took it at a very nice structural area, 48 grand when price had pushed back, you know, um, and then and then I took it all the way to 56,000, right? And have, so have you, you been waiting like, for some you know news release or some fundamental stuff, or you've been just stick to your 100 percent okay, yeah, okay. Like like when I trade, no fundamentals, 100 okay. percent technical. I know that might be weird for some people, but no, no. that's what works. Yeah, one hundred percent technical is when I trade. No, no, I don't. I don't look at fundamentals. Fundamentals mess me up. Like when I used to like, I used to get on forexfactory.com and look at meetings and stuff like that, and and it actually used to do me more harm than good because like when I would when I would see that there was a meeting coming up, like I would change my whole bias because of the meeting, and I don't even know what the hell the news is or what the news. Like you don't even know what yeah. the report is yet, and then you're already changing your bias. So because of that. 100% technicals. Right, but you have yeah. to be aware when those news releases are. You oh, know. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant of when when there's going to be high, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'm cognizant of, of like, um, like, like when there's going to be like high, strong news that's coming out. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to trade on NFP. You know what I mean? Like I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 
like that, you know what I mean? Like, like when Brexit was happening, I wasn't gonna trade during Brexit, you know what I mean? Like, so you know, like like big high mar high volatility news like that. Like, I'm either gonna be out of the market before then, or I'm gonna get in the market afterwards. Wow, nice. Thank you very much. This was really yeah. great. And let's get yeah. going. Okay, so thank you very much, Mohamed. And now let's talk about your future. So where do you see yourself in like five years period? Man, f f five years period, I see myself trading a multi-million dollar account. You know what I mean? So Okay, um, everyone so, been saying. <laughs> I know every, everyone says that, but you know, you, you have to have an actionable plan, right? So um, I, I... And a reasonable. And, and, a, and a reasonable plan, right? But... Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think that it's unreasonable to, to, to have to have a multi-million dollar account that you're trading in five years, especially, you know, at, at the rate that I'm going now. You know what I mean? Me finally being, you know, consistently drawing money out of the markets. You know what I mean? And, and consistently building my personal account, trading my FTMR account. I think that it's extremely feasible and I'm going to shoot for the moon. And if I land amongst the stars, it's all good. Right. <laughs> so, you, you know, so, you know, five, five years from now, I. I I, I definitely hope to still be in the markets. I hope to still to still be profitable, still learning, still being a student of the game, still being open minded, you know, still trying to learn. You know what I mean? Um, one, one thing that I want to get into now is I actually dealing with like um, like psychology teachers. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. five years from now, uh, like like one, like like one of my biggest inspirations to actually start focusing on um, on psychology, Steve Ward. You know, Steve Ward came out, you know, wrote a book called High Performance Trading, and that completely changed the way that I looked at myself in the market, within the market. And um, Bulletproof Trading, you know, those books were extremely instrumental. And, um, you know, I definitely in the future would like to somebody that I would definitely love to connect with and work with, because I think that strengthening yourself mentally would only help your longevity in the markets. So five years from now, hoping that I'm still learning. I, I, I want to have a trading coach by then. I want to be trading a multi-million dollar account by then, you know, and I, and I just want to be advancing. You know what I mean? This I is you like, this, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, like, like this is my, this is the passport to everything else that I want to do. Everything else that I want to invest in, in the world, all the, all the amazing things that I want to be a part of in this world, everything that I want to do, everything that I want to donate to everything, the, 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 the found, the big the, um, the, um, the foundation for that is trading. Mm -hmm. So I definitely have to take my trading to the next level and not in order to be able to do all the amazing other things that I want to do in this world. And do you plan to grow with FTMO? Uh, yeah, for sure. I definitely plan on growing with FTMO. Um, I, I think that that's definitely feasible. Have for you been sure. thinking about, for example, the scaling plan? Um, like every four months, they give you like an additional 25 percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I actually, I've, I've done the math. And once I get the four hundred thousand dollar account mm -hmm. with the scaling plan within uh, within two years, I, I, I'm going to have a million dollars account. So uh, with the scaling plan. So it's so it's definitely feasible. <laughs> cool. Cool. So what did you say uh, about FTMO to others? Um, this is what I'm going to say about FTMO. One of the biggest challenges that traders face is undercapitalization. So the biggest thing is a lot of traders get into this market with $500 thinking that they're going to be millionaires. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I hate to bur burst your bubble, but you're not going to turn $500 into a million dollars. You're not going to turn a thousand dollars into a million dollars. That, that's not feasible. And anybody, any gurus online that tell you that they're full of crap. They're not being completely honest with you. So the one, 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 one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that people face is undercapitalization and people don't even realize it. But when you're undercapitalized and you, you can't make 50 percent returns, 60 percent returns consistently every month. If you have a thousand dollar account, you can't make a 100 percent return every single month on your way to becoming a millionaire. It's not going to work. You there, there's there's drawdown. There's going to be periods that you're not going to be winning. So that's what FDMO provides for traders. It provides an avenue to have capital that you can trade so that you can scale. You know what I mean? You can you, you can make money with the FDMO. You can fund your account, pay yourself and, and, and continue to trade and build your account up until, you know, you have a substantial amount. And I, and I believe that that definitely helps out mentally for people. So FTMO, that if, if there's one thing that I can say FTMO does, it helps take away that stress. That undercapitalization, that stress of trying to turn five hundred dollars into a million dollars. Now you have an opportunity to put your skill to the test. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you say that you're cold on the charts, if you're a beast on the charts and you got what it takes, let's go. Take the challenge and get paid. You know, it's easy money. Wow! Thank you very much for saying that. That's why we are here. Absolutely. And do you have some 
last words to our subscribers and followers, some enlightenment for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and this is the honest part and this is the nitty gritty part. Uh -huh. um, trading is one of the simplest things in the world. And because of that, it is one of the toughest things to, to partake in in the world. I know doctors that have tried to become traders. And they have miserably failed. I know surgeons. I know lawyers who have got into this market and they have completely failed. And the reason why is because it takes a different type of animal to be a trader. Um, a lot of people uh, like I used to be in a car business and I used to be an alpha male. Like like I'm, I'm still an alpha male, but I have to learn that you cannot be an alpha in the trading markets like the alpha male mentality is a win, 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 win mentality at all costs. That mentality actually helps you fail in trading. Trading is 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 you can't be a lion in trading. You can't be a hunter. I, 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 I like I, I heard Randy Howell say uh, Randy Howell is a psychologist like like he's like a trading coach. And he says, when when you're trading, you need to be a cougar. You cannot be a lion. A lion hunts their prey. A cougar stalks their prey. You have to be able to stalk your trades to find the best high probability trades in trading. And lastly, not everybody succeeds. Most of the people who get into trading are not going to succeed. If it were that simple, everybody would, would trade. So you have to tell yourself, okay, you know what? This is what I want to do. And by all means, I'm going to do it. Because if you don't have that beast mode in you, if you don't have that, if you don't have that, that, that just that animal instinct that you're going to win at all costs, like when it comes to being successful, then you're not going to make it as a trader because it's a very lonely game. You don't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have anybody that I could call when I blew accounts. Like it was tough, man. It was just me and my friend Terrell that we had each other. We had nobody else. And it, it gets it's a lonely, dark road. But you have to stay in the game long enough. You have to give yourself enough enough time to get to the other side. And once you get to the other side, $10,000 a day is nothing. $100,000 a day is nothing. You know what I mean? A million dollars in a week is nothing. If you have the capital, you can make it happen. So, you know, what I tell all these traders, it's tough. It's hard. You're going to get your butt kicked. It's going to be excruciating. And people that you love are going to tell you, when I quit my job, my loved ones told me not to do it. Everybody told me to go back to my job and work because I was making a very good living. You know what I mean? And and I decided to trade. And if, and right and even after I quit my job in 2018, I was in profitable right away. It was tough. I depleted my savings. I almost lost my house. Like, this is the shit that it takes to get to the next level. Like, this is not something that it's going to come right away. But you keep going. You keep persevering. You, you, you keep trying to learn and be a better individual. Keep trying to learn yourself and you're going to and you're going to get there eventually. And that's a theme of.